When we're dealing with Angular validation, Angular provides a couple different states for us so that we can know what state our input fields are in. Now that's a lot of words. What it really means is that Angular provides a couple different ways for us to tell certain important things about our input fields. The main states that Angular provides are as follows. Touched, untouched, dirty, pristine, valid, and invalid. Touched and untouched is has the input field been actually touched. Dirty and pristine is has the input field's value changed. And valid and invalid is does that input field match and pass all of its validation requirements. We're going to take a quick look at how all of these work and how we can use them in our applications. In addition to providing the states, Angular 2 provides a way to have classes that will automatically be applied to each of these input fields. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of our end so that an input field can automatically have a class and automatically get it removed depending on the state of that input field. These are the input fields that match our validation states, ng-touched, ng-untouched, and all of the following. Let's see how we can use these in our applications. Right now we have our template form. What we're going to do is this ng model automatically adds those state classes to this input. We don't have to do anything extra. As we've been working on this application, those classes have been added and removed on the fly. Let's demonstrate. If we go to inspect that element, you can see that ng pristine, ng valid, and ng touch classes are already applied there. As soon as I click it and delete it, it is no longer valid since we already had that required flag on there. So now we have this ng invalid class here. Notice our input field has ng touched, ng dirty, and ng invalid. In addition to an input field having those classes and states, our overall form also has those classes. Let's use a local template variable to see those classes in action. So right now we're just inspecting element to see those classes. We can actually create a local template variable. We'll call this one name and we'll call this one username. A template variable just means that we're creating a new variable called name and it is bound to this element. Now local template variables are bound directly to the template and they don't have to do anything with the class itself. It's just all encompassed in the template. So without going to the class and creating new methods there, we can immediately use it here. We'll do name.className. And let's do the same below here for username.className. So we're automatically showing these as they change. You can see these classes here. Since we are now using our local template variable to look at these classes, as soon as I start touching this, it is touched as opposed to this untouched class. If I delete everything, it is now invalid, and so on and so forth. So you can see how really powerful and quickly we can start using these classes and these states since they're automatically given to us by Angular 2. This is pretty similar to how forms worked in Angular 1, so it's not too much of a jump going from Angular 1 to Angular 2 template-driven forms. Now these form input fields already get these classes. Let's style one of these to make sure that we can actually see the new styles take place. Let's go into template form component.css. Let's do an input ng invalid. And let's do a border left and we'll do five pixels solid red. On the opposite side of that, let's do an input.ng valid and border left, five pixels solid and green. Let's give that a try. Right now, both of these are valid. As soon as I delete everything, it is invalid. So quickly and easily, we can start doing a little bit more visual feedback for our users. Let's refresh the page. Right now, I don't really want these to show as valid or invalid. So we can also add the class dot ng touched. So these will only show after that input field has been touched. And this is helpful for when we're creating a new user, since we don't want to show errors before a user has actually even used the form. Now that it is touched, we can see that the success class shows and that as well. All right, so those are some really easy techniques to use in our template-driven forms. Next, we'll move further into a little bit more advanced validation.